be wondering, how did you, Ooh, how did you drop a thousand dollars? It's only a sixty dollar so. game. Welcome back to 4 Geeks by Geeks. We were your coolest AV Club members. As always, I'm PK. And I'm Bozer. And today's very special guest is Moose. Yes. And Moose will be joining us to talk about Destiny uh, in its collective. So not just the sequel that is out right now, but Destiny as a whole. For those who don't know, Destiny is very rich in like lore. Um, even though you don't get to see the lore in the game, um, you read it's it. got a lot if you go hunt it on the internet. Yeah, or spend, read. Spend three weeks digging around for pieces of plastic sitting on the ground in whatever mission you're in. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hit lore. And then once you find the lore, then you gotta go find the book that you just unlocked, and then you gotta read that book. Um, yeah. Or, if you're like me, you'll just find cool YouTubers like us who will describe the lore for you. So, Moose, tell us, what do you love? What geeks you out about Destiny? <laughs> I've, I've been following Bungie games since I was able to play video games at a proficient level, and I played Halo 3. Probably. Nice. I had three discs that I burned through on that game. I just couldn't stop. And when Destiny was announced, I found that it was like the spiritual successor to Halo. Yeah. And into that, I got Destiny 1 when I first started working at GameStop, and... Um, I loved it so much that when I got involved with the community and found more friends that are doing it, I actually dropped $1,000 on Destiny 2. Nani? Now you might be wondering, how did, Moose, how did you drop $1,000? It's only a $60 so, game. Now, I could kind of help with this. You know this story? No, not all of it, but I, just mathematically. You bought the Destiny and then you sold it to him for $1,000? 100%. No, so here's how you <laughs> can look at this. So, wow. <laughs> first, you have to look at the collector's edition. Okay. And now how much did each collector's edition run? So, instead of going with the, the standard edition, I think with the collector's edition, you're right. I got the collector's edition for PlayStation 4, which was, I believe... Or $100. It was 100, I remember, right? Yeah, I think it was 100. Just came with a booklet. Okay, so that's a tenth of the thousand of dollars. Hang on, forget it. Okay. So it's yeah. 100. Yep. Now, you owned it on that, Xbox, and PC, but the other two were just $60 versions of it. So now you're at 220 Wait, And why did you buy all of them? Well, I mean, let's take a trip back. <laughs> I, um... That's why he's on this show today with us, because he has put his sweat, his blood, and all his monies into Destiny. Sorry, continue. So, I um, originally was just going to get the collector's edition for PlayStation, but at the same time, I was starting to get my other job at Apple, and um, I had a little bit more income to my name, so I decided, you know what, I'm going to get the real collector's edition, the big <laughs> backpack that I've oh. worn a total of zero times that was... Oh, no. Didn't that come with the Kate statue too, though? No, they, well, they all came with a little. No, you had to pay extra for that. They, oh. they all came with a little pre-order, like bobblehead <laughs> one, but there wasn't like an actual like cool statue. That oh was later no! I'm sorry. Yes, the Kate statue comes later, but we'll explain that. So I didn't get that one, but so I'm I've spent two hundred on Xbox. Mm-hmm. Two two hundred ish. Let's call it three hundred by the time I was done with everything. So three hundred on Xbox. 100 on PlayStation, and then 60 on PC. Okay. So now you got 300, 100, 400, so 460. So we're halfway there. Now, buying the first patch of DLC for all three systems. Oh, which yeah. Which that's all four, no, six, it's like 60 a, bucks a pop. Yeah, whole nother game. So that's 180. And then Forsaken comes out, and I think you got Forsaken for at least two of them, if not all three. Uh, I did get it for PS4 and Xbox One. That was 40 of each, so that's 80. So, then... I'm just going to stress sip over here. <laughs> You're good. I'm, I'm stress sipping mentally right now. Now, <laughs> they have one more DLC patch that just came out, which was the uh, season pass, which had the season of the Drifter. Uh, oh, man, I'm a bad fan. Um, 
They had Season of Opulence, which is out right now. Right. If you haven't played it. That one's super good. Out. Season of Opulence has been the best of the three. It's really good. And then there okay. was one that came before the Season of the Drifter, which uh, was Black Armory. Black Armory, which is a waste of time, in my thought. Yeah. If you're not a hardcore player, the Black Armory is just like, hey, here's a weapon that you'll spend ten hours getting and use for probably two days. Because we're gonna yeah. make a better weapon for you in like ten minutes. Yep. Uh, Grind City for nothing was what yep. it was. And we are missing the most important token about this enormous, enormous price tag. At the very last second, I'm talking, I walked into GameStop for the midnight release of Destiny 2. My own store, by the way, so I had to watch my manager, like, smirk begrudgingly hand me all of this stuff. At the very last second, I decided, we've got an extra PS4 Pro version, right? Oh, I had a, P- yeah. I had a plain old PS4 at this point, and when I walked in that day, I saw that somebody had canceled their pre-order but we had we had already had it in store so it was was fair stock and i said you know what so i was selling all of my original ps4 and all the games and all the extra controllers i had and at the end all total out of my pocket i spent three hundred dollars but as the price tag went on and on and on with all the deals oh man the end of my total receipt that night was i believe somewhere around $950 and if that's not close enough to a thousand to call it I don't know what no it is. it is that is I think a thousand dollars for a fan is uh it, it completely qualifies you as number one fan of destiny <laughs> <sighs> not to mention now there is a new season coming out in September mm-hmm. now this one is supposed to be bigger than anything else they've done aren't they all no and here's why. This is this is what makes this one bigger than any of the other DLCs that they've done. This is the point, the turning point where now Bungie has said, we're done with you Activision controlling everything we do. We're done with making Sony our whipping boys by making everything exclusive to PlayStation first. We're done with all of this. We are coming head first and we are doing this by ourselves. And in doing that, they have created a whole new way that they're playing games. Okay. Um, they never liked that they had this microtransaction, so it's still going to exist. But, like, you can see that, like, the armor was never, like, a well... Like, they never wanted you to feel like you had to buy the good armor, so they made the stats on it crappy. So now they're like, you can buy this skin, but now you can attach it to your other armors. So you, it's basically the skin, so you get the good stats of whatever armor you want, and you can make it look however you oh, want. Oh, like, cool. Like Super customizable. In, it's like your armor sneaking into a movie, and instead of being an adult and having its own ID, it's using the... There's cover of another armor to look cooler but act stronger. Okay. It's a cloak. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. And it's super nice. And and that's coming out with this next DLC. This next DLC in September. Okay. Um, and I think that's just the first stepping stone into the big changes we're going to see now that Bungie has made itself a separate entity. And I, we'll talk more about my thoughts on that later on. But I, I do want to know everybody's opinion on what – like the idea of the small company – separating from big triple a titles like activision well first you have to think about it destiny isn't a small company after, after not anymore halo saga yeah. yeah after bungie is just bungie sold halo to microsoft because they were done making it because it was just becoming microsoft's like well, baby halo 4 yeah. was their last no oh, halo, reach? Just, halo reach was their yes, last. yes halo and reach they... was their last and they were like this is where our story ends because we they told the whole story of master chief and then they told the story of how the Spartans came to be, and they were like, "This is it, we're good." Yeah. And Microsoft's like, "Money." <laughs> I mean, it is a money pit. I mean, a, a money grab, but uh, but so Bungie's now separated, and I mean, so what are they gonna do next? This is all news to me. I'm being educated. So originally, when Bungie was announced, it was in partnership with Activision, which is one of the biggest developers in games right now. Yeah, I remember playing Activision uh, as a kid, like one of the Spider-Man games back in the day was Tony, Activision. Tony and there's still Tony Hawk, yes. We were just talking about that today. Uh, Tony Hawk, like, you remember creating your parks? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Ah. It's terrible. I, I, I always sucked at any There's sort of create your own there. sandbox. It was like one ramp in the middle. I was like, what do I do now? Anyway, so. Um, <laughs> Bungie was attached to them because they hadn't had their own idea in a while, and Activision was more financial backer. And after they okay. saw all the headway that the game was getting, they decided to 
invest in it and sort of develop it in their own way so they could tweak it and make it their game. But as it's gotten more and more popular, Bungie has gotten more and more of a cult following with all of the different, like, I think Bungie has their own con now that happens. Like, Bungie con? Some, I don't know if it's Bungie con. I think it's like Guardian or Destiny con or something. So it's, it's, it's the Guardian, I think it's like a Guardian convention. Yeah. Uh, but the cool that thing is cool. where it started all about Destiny. Now it's about like just video games. Um, yeah. Uh, somebody we know like most there cons, every yeah. year. I think it's out of Seattle. Let me look it up. Please hold. You guys talk. So while he's looking that up, um, when Destiny became so popular, but Bungie decided that, well, we're already doing most of the, le- the legwork. You guys are just slapping your name on it and yeah. giving us money. And with all of the microtransactions happening, you could see the fan base kind of dwindle over time. And it's been a big t- uh, pattern with Destiny that... Once a new wave of DLC comes out, the whole fan base returns and mm-hmm. plays all of it until it's. <coughs> bless you. Sorry, thank you. Um, plays all of it until it's worn out, and then they'll leave, and then they'll come back at the next DLC because yeah. Activision always has to like get their grubby little fingers on microtransactions. But now that Bungie has decided to take back the name Bungie of Destiny, mm-hmm. it's now becoming its own IP solely made by Bungie. Yes. That'll be really exciting to uh, see how that. That changes and just how the gameplay uh, and it feels n- new. And it's yeah. not only changing the whole face of like bu- of Destiny; it's also changing the whole face of like video games and microtransactions. Because, like David said, um, it her. like David said, with the microtransactions being just you're putting on a new skin, not like actually getting anything good. Yeah. Um, they took away the incentivization of having to buy all of the little the little cryptocurrencies that you would then turn around and use yeah on. i've never once paid for anything and they wanted you to steer it clear of that mm-hmm. um, they made it very obvious that they didn't want you to invest in this and they made it as hard as possible for you to actually go in and get this stuff there were like there was like three different sub screens that were like are you sure you want to invest money in this like skin that means nothing yeah right and now they're they've, they've made an announcement saying hey dismantle all of your stuff you can get it back but you're going to want that bright dust because that's how we're going to give it away and like they were talking about like their whole future process like if you really feel strongly about it you can but it's not it's just like overwatch where it's not something that is crucial to the game yeah you don't it, need it and like you can buy loot boxes and you can have a good time um but then he spent 150 dollars to have uh the dance emote with Lucio or something right um so guardian con back on that topic real quick as a flip is in orlando florida okay um, but we were talking about this at work the other day and it started out being about Destiny, and then they're like, let's bring other video games into this. And then you get Fortnite had a big showcase with Ninja and all of them. Yeah. And like every big video game, they just come in and make announcements. I think Borderlands 3 has a big announcement coming up at Guardians Con. Oh, okay. Um, and if I'm not mistaken, I think that one of the last years there was like a beta for Six Legends, I think. I believe so. Oh. So I could be wrong on that one. So it's just I becoming like this. It's a very big video game con. Yeah, this spot where you know you're going to get some big hits, some big news kind of things. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. And also, it's a good chance to sort of get involved with the community on like a physical level where it's yeah. like um, you see all these different cons like like Chicago Comic Con or like C2E2 um, those things are more based around like the whole of geek culture whereas this is more of a subsect of that mm-hmm. they're trying to video games it. yeah yeah which I think is probably needed because there's Comic Con there's a ton of anime cons Wizard Con but there's there's I guess there's fewer just specifically yeah. video game the cons. Gen Con is about tabletop. Like tabletop. Yeah. So it's really nice to have that, um, and it's been big. But I think I don't. I while well, I was searching, I don't know if you, did you talk about the fact that with Bungie buying out, they're also moving away from any kind of attachment to big titles like Blizzard. Um, is their server currently? Oh, really? Uh, and they're they're stepping down from that too, because technically that's still in their partnership with Activision, because Activision is partnered with Blizzard, mm-hmm. so they put like Call of Duty and stuff like that on theirs, and they're like, we're completely clearing out. So they're coming off of the Blizzard and going straight onto Steam, where everything else is. Um, Got it. Well, kind of. Thanks, um, David. Yeah, and unfortunately now Steam is kind of under fire too, though, um, from is it Epic. Mm. Uh-huh. Epic has put Steam under fire by saying that they're not paying the creators enough. They're taking too big of a percentage. So Epic is giving incentive for people to come over and do that. And it sucks because Epic is a terrible uh, game source. 
it, I, I wouldn't want, I wouldn't want to say Activision is a terrible game source, but it's definitely a competitor and in a market where Steam has been so ingrained in it. For so well, and reliable. Like, yeah. I think Epic is still growing and like fixing its bugs, so it crashes a little bit more than. Oh, okay. Steam. Plus, I haven't seen on Epic that I've been able to get Binding of Isaac for three cents and then get paid to get a copy of TF2 when it goes for like 110 percent off, which is apparently something that Steam can do periodically. Yeah, so if they get enough, they're like, we're going to give you money to try this game out real quick. Done. And it's not even like, it's not like, it's like they're paying you like 60 bucks, like, here, try this game, we, we'll pay you if it's bad. It's like, hey, uh, we get such a high profit margin on this that you can literally have some back and use it on another game because that's really want nice. You to keep playing games. Yeah, that shows that the people are in it for the right reasons because they love games, they love what games mean to people, they love what game they can do. Um, since this is a geek out session about Destiny, I gotta know. Number one favorite thing about Destiny, go. Uh, the community. Easy community? The community. I actually, my um, best friend, Adam, actually, I met him on Xbox playing Halo, I think, over 10 years ago at this point, and over the course of Destiny 1 and Destiny 2 transition period, um, I convinced him to move from where he was originally, New York, to move out here, and he lives here in town. And through Destiny, through, not, through Destiny, through Halo, through video games, through man. Bungie. Through yes, Bungie. thanks, Bungie. Thanks, Bungie, for helping my best friend. Move, move. sponsored by Bungie. Well, I, I think that's beautiful, though. It it shows that video games and like I think even like gaming friends yeah. can be so much stronger. Like the people realize, like you know, people talk about like, well, go outside and make real friends, but like in real life, I can't like fly into space and shoot aliens and, and like, have save epic the adventures, world with my friends. right? Because like if you were and I were to get in a car crash together, that would be a catalyzing experience, but we hopefully don't do that. So instead, we could go on and, and nearly die backs against the wall shooting off aliens all day, yeah. and it has the same effect, yeah, kind of. And I think the cool part about that is like, do you remember when you were a kid and you play pretend with your friends? Yes. You can't do that as well. You can do it as an adult. I do every day. LARPing and going to. Um, I was say, aren't you guys actors? Yes, I still do it. But pretend like, but all day every day. I think it's different where you like you're scripted there and like. True. You it's not just improv. Get, like, free form and like I mean even. That's then, why like, we Dungeons and Dragons, man. Dungeons and Dragons, RPGs, and yeah. things like that. So I think that whole thing with pretend. I mean, that really just builds a strong bond. Yeah. And, I don't know. I love video games for that reason. It's always been a big thing. It's an escape. Yeah. But you're right. Friendships that you can create on games. Like, I've made some, and people just don't understand it. It sounds weird. It sounds creepy. It sounds like, oh, i got to meet up my friends. I'm like, are, are they really your friends? Is it some 80-year-old you know I mean? man that's acting like a little 12-year-old girl? Like, yeah. no, I can hear that's his it. voice. That's I know it's an 80-year-old man, and we're cool. I know it's extremely personal. Like, can you take that from somewhere? No. <laughs> but, yeah, but like, okay, so what if it is an 80 old man? Like, if you can bond on video games, like, do yeah. it. Yeah. Like, like, through through that same group of friends that gave me my best friend and who moved out here, a couple more of them actually took me on a trip with them to Los Angeles. They drove from New York to pick me up in Indiana. We drove all the way across the country. And I had never spent more than four or five hours in the same room as these people before this. In the same room. But how much had he spent over a headset? days weeks yeah weeks and weeks and weeks and it sounds stupid but that's real time spent that's real bond being created yeah so. i i just thanks think bungie for creating such a strong community we live in a really cool world where what was the norm before is not the norm now mm -hmm. and that's the beauty of geek culture that is the beauty of what the internet has done to raise geek culture on this pedestal that it lives on now yeah so we got to know, what do you love about Destiny? What geeks you out? Is it the emotes? Is it all the crazy guns? Um, are you excited about the fact that Bungie's separating and this new kind of uh, way, microtransaction things that they're doing away with? Let us know in the comments below. And if you'd like to see more content like this, or if there's a topic we haven't talked about yet that you want to talk more about, or if there's a topic we have talked and you want us to extend that, uh, go ahead and leave that in the comments below as well. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, hit that bell icon uh, if you never want to miss another video. And uh, until next time, I'm PK. And I'm Bozer. And I'm Moose. And you keep geeking, geeking out. out.